Greetings and welcome back to 303 in Junior English. I'm with you now on page 906 of your hymnals, and we turn now to Langston Hughes' poem, Dream Variations. We've already covered a couple of the Langston Hughes offerings, uh, Negro Speaks of Rivers, and I, too. And now we turn to the third of four poems by Langston Hughes that we will be studying, Dream Variations. I just want to point out, because I didn't say it in, uh, in the earlier two lectures on Langston Hughes, your textbook company is attempting to try to give you not only some experience of poetic um, uh, works during this time period that we call the Harlem Renaissance, but they're also giving you some compelling images as well. If you'll take a look, for example, just back one page to page 904, we could obviously ask the question about what's going on with this um, 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 Robert Gwathney poem or a painting here, um, and more particularly two questions. What's up with the number two? Of course, the poem I too, right? The number two, and what's up with the lion on the wall behind the character, especially as it relates to the very poem that we were working with with I too, and of course on the preceding page 903, and the uh, compelling image that, that is there. You might, um, you might try and make some connections at level um, 3A uh, as to, you know, why is it possible that these are here, the Aaron Douglas end of bondage on page uh, 903 image. Um, and of course you see, I, the reason I pointed out, is you see a similar kind of image on page 906. We may ask at 3A, do you see any relationship at all between the poem Dream Variations and, uh, this, and this drawing? Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead now and turn to the poem itself without a whole lot of, uh, of prior knowledge talk and let's just go ahead and, and enjoy the poem, all right? So I'm reading with you now on page 906, Dream Variations. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then Rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. This is my dream, to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at pale evening, a tall, slim tree, night coming tenderly, black like me. Now there's any number of places to start with a poem like this, but let's just begin at level 1 and at level 2B. In fact, let's go to level 2B right away and identify that this is a poem of two stanzas. Note that we have some interesting kind of rhythms at play. Notice that we have in the first stanza the use of the dash. And in the second stanza, the use twice of the ellipsis, right, uh, at line 14, at line 15, to ask some questions about rhyme scheme as well. Okay. Notice, for example, line 15 ends with the word tree, then tenderly, then me. So the last three lines of this poem end with some kind of intentional rhyme scheme. So all of the poetic devices that we would constitute as closed form are happening in this poem. The other thing we want to jot down it to be really quickly is the title. Dream Variations. Dream Variations. Now I think we know what dream means, but what about this word variations? We might think about variations as in altered states, different types of dreams. This is going to be a poem about dreams, and immediately we'll jump to 3A, and we'll remember that the most famous civil rights speech of all time is Martin Luther King Jr.'s, I Have a Dream. While we don't read it in this anthology, you might look up online, Google Langston Hughes's classic, Dream Deferred, What Happens to a Dream Deferred. Langston Hughes is very interested in writing about dreams. Of course, that is significant when you are struggling and you are challenged with obstacles to maybe dream, to hope about, as we saw in the I2 poem, tomorrow, the future. 
Let's go ahead now and begin at level one, and let's just read an exegete, trying to summarize what it is that we are reading, just at level one. We'll get to themes messages at level two in a moment. First, notice right away, to fling my arms wide in some place of the sun. And by the way, let's just pause to remind ourselves how we want to learn to read poetry. Notice we don't read this as to fling my arms wide and then pause and then read in some place of the sun, but rather we pay attention to punctuation. Recognize that we've got the comma at the conclusion of the second line and a period at the end of the fourth line. So we're going to read the thought. So let's read it. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done. Now immediately you'll start to hear the rhythms that are that iambic beat. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done. Now of course your, your painting there on that page plays the game of children doing what? What are they doing? Can you figure that out? What's up with all those ropes in that picture? Right, we are playing with, of course, the jumping games with ropes, right? Jump rope and the like, right? Double dutch and all that kind of stuff. All of the creative acts that children will commit during a day of play. So right away, the dream that he will call his dream at line nine, this is my dream exclamation mark, right? Is to begin with images of freedom, We'll talk about this in 2A in a bit. Fling the arms wide in some place of the sun. Whirl, dance, till the white day is done. It is significant, of course, that the adjective white is used here because we will, two times later, play the game of that which is not white, dark and black. Correct. Then, in other words, the first part of the dream, we might say, for level one is simply action. Right? To, to be active, to be active. Then, rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. The dash. This, or that is my dream. Exclamation point. The first stanza then can be reduced at level one to... I would love to live where I could be active by day and peaceful by night. That's my dream. We come back to the opening line again. To fling my arms wide in the face of the sun. Notice the word place has now been re 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 um, somehow replaced with the word face. Dance, whirl, the second word again use whirl till the quick day is done rest at now it's pale not quite evening but uh, um, rest uh, at pale evening as opposed to white day a tall slim tree notice one more adjective added beneath the tall tree from the first you can see that the sense of variation right we're, we're playing the game of variation on a theme. Night coming tenderly as opposed to gently. Black like me as opposed to dark like me. The one thing missing, go ahead and write it down. What's the one thing missing in the second stanza? And of course, most of you will point out the repetition of the line, that is my dream exclamation point. But of course, this is dream variations. In other words, variations on a theme. And, and, and we sometimes use that language, by the way, when we're talking about music. So let's jump to 2A really quickly. What is this actually a poem about? Well, many have argued that this, again, is a speaker, individual, speaking for a group. Namely, of course, a group of people who are black. Dark, like me. Black, like me. The celebration, let's go ahead and start now at 2A with themes messages. The celebration of the active life, the celebration of the peaceful life. Another major message, the quest for a dream that can be achieved. 
finally, and a, a lot of readers have seen this, and it's one of the reasons for your image there on page 906, a lot of readers have seen this as, as well, about the joy of freedom, especially to be a child who is completely free to just, as he says it in the second, in the second stanza, dance, whirl, a second time, whirl, in other words, to be a person of tremendous energy and action. And then in the evening, as nighttime comes on, to be a person of peace, to be able to sleep well. In other words, to live a life of consummate action and peace at the same time. Langston Hughes's dream variations then playing a game of hope as well as dream. Let's jump to 2B really quickly. Of course, we've already pointed out a number of things here that we can say rhetorically about this poem. The rhythms are compelling. Look at the second stanza, and we'll continue with the study of the rhythms. To fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done, rest at pale evening, a tall slim tree, night coming tenderly, black like me. The rhythms, rhyme, the meter, it's all there, as of course he's playing a game of energy and this beautiful melodic uh, uh, tendency of this poem. Again, let's just remind ourselves, Langston Hughes, very much influenced by blues and by jazz. And for those of you that have listened to much blues, you know that we often will have these variations where you're going to say something and you come back and you're going to say it again and you're going to say it something kind of akin. So we're playing the same kind of game here in Dream Variations. Finally, let's jump to uh, 3A really quickly. We've already commented on the on the images that the image that's associated um, with uh, with this. Let's start thinking a little bit about the other two uh, Langston Hughes poems that we've already studied. How do you see this poem as similar to A Negro Speaks of Rivers and I Too? How do you see this as a different kind of poem? Some students have pointed out that one of the things that's different about this poem is that it has less of that kind of heavy. Uh, um, kind of voice to it and tone and mood to it and more of a joy-filled, joyful kind of tone. We can ask, of course, about your favorite titles that somehow relate to a title like this. Do you have a song that in its lyrics plays with variations on a theme where, for example, the wording is very similar from one verse to the next verse, just not exactly the same? Let me ask it this way, and, I, and I've had juniors that kind of take pause when I ask this, but I'll ask it this way, and you tell me, what is your dream song? By that I mean the following. Of all the songs in your playlist that you listen to, what is the dream song for you? What is the song that best represents your dream, your perfect life? Can you write that down? What is your dream movie? What is your dream video? What is your dream video game? By here, I don't mean the one you like the most. I mean, obviously, you can use the word dream that way. But rather, I mean by dream, I mean the thing that paints the hope of your future. The thing that tells you, this is what I hope someday I can achieve, or I can do, or I can be. Finally, at 3B, the obvious question in a poem like this, there's several, right? But one of them, obviously, is, what is for you your dream? What is for you something you could say, which right after you said it, you would be able to say, that is my dream, exclamation point. Do you have that? Is it clearly defined for you? Is it something that you say, I wish I could have this? Of course, let's just point out for a second. We normally, if we say, I wish I could have, and you fill in the blank, that normally means you don't have it what? Right now, correct? In other words, it's something that I'm hoping for. It's something that I long for in the future. Many have argued that what Langston Hughes is actually saying without saying it is, we live in a world where children, especially children, cannot yet have totally this as their life. So the only thing they can do is to dream of it, to dance, whirl, whirl. Of course, that's another question for you. When was the last time that you felt totally active by day, totally peaceful by night. Some of my students will report, this does not seem to be the junior year experience. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of worry. 
There's a lot of concern. People now are starting to ask you about an ACT score and, of course, the future after, after high school and graduation and what's going to happen in my future and all the, ah, the stress of it all. When was the last time, can I ask it this way, when was the last time you were free to dance, whirl, whirl? When was the last time that you were totally free from all of that? Well, there you go, Langston Hughes' Dream Variations. I hope that it's given you some pause for thought. Thank you.